Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar organized by JetBrains. I'm Paul Everett, PyCharm Developer Advocate, and I'll be your host. The topic for today's webinar is Productive PyTest with PyCharm. Our presenter today is Brian Aachen, one of the leading voices for Python testing. Brian is the author of Python Testing with PyTest, a book I bought seven milliseconds after the first beta copies were on sale. No kidding. I was like, okay, I got to get this. Uh, Brian, how are sales on the book? Um, they're, they're doing really good, actually. Um, I don't have anything to compare it to, but I'm happy. Uh, just as an aside, everyone I've ever talked to that wrote a book said I could make more money mowing lawns. This was a horrific experience. I'll never do this again. And then they do it again. What was it like writing the book? Um, I I di didn't have that kind of an experience. I thought it was incredible. It uh, working with an editor and um, um, it helped me organize my thoughts about the topic. And I think I'm a better expert now than I was before I started writing it. So it was worth it. Yeah, if you want to learn something, teach it. Yeah. Uh, Brian's also very active in Python podcasting with the Test and Code podcast, as well as co-hosting Python Bytes with Michael Kennedy. For those of you going to PyCon, uh, Brian, I heard you and some sidekick are giving a talk. Yeah, you and me. Um, <laughs> so I think it'll be a lot of fun. What are you planning to cover? Um, well, I think maybe we should cover PyTest and uh, PyCharm together. All right. That sounds good. All right. Uh, yeah. We are aiming that talk at um, visual testing with PyCharm. And the idea is for, for beginners who are intimidated by testing, let's put a pretty face on it and uh, make it accessible. Does that sound about right? Yeah. All right. Today's webinar about PyTest is going to be super useful. We had a previous webinar uh, with Kenneth Love that covered the basics of PyTest and PyCharm. Today, Brian's going to help us acquire some PyTest Zen. God, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, all right. Now that we're all set, I'd like to hand the mic over. Welcome, Brian. Hi. Um, let's see. Show my screen. Yes. Um, I'm so excited to be here. So uh, before we got started, I put up the code and GitHub, and um, I've uh, uh, cloned it. I've got it all ready, and I'm just going to open PyCharm. And when I installed PyCharm this last time, it gave me the option to do a command line, um, uh, make it available on the command line, and I, I set this up. So this isn't this PyCharm uh, shortcut isn't by default, but if you install it right, you can get that. And if you forget to, you can get to it from the help menu. Oh, really? Cool. Yep. So I just wanted to, I wanted to start clean uh, to make sure that I didn't have anything uh, that I normally do that I forgot. And actually, I already thought about something. I started in the wrong directory. Um, so I'm going to, I've got my task project that I, I put up there. I'm going to go ahead and go into the task projects and I did not get my virtual environment ready. So, uh, oops, it's fast though. And I usually do this. Um, this is something I, I, I have the convention of always using VNV for my virtual environment. And I have so many around that I add the prompt, um, to tell, to help me know what, uh, project I'm working on at any time. Um, Source. There we go. Now I can open it. Oh, I need to install everything. So I've got everything in uh, in the setup. Um, in my setup, all the the requirements are there. So to install both the project and all my requirements, I'll go ahead and install everything. And I install it in editable so that I can uh, modify the code while I'm working on it. And open PyCharm. Now, um, this this beginning bit, um, if you get it set up right, PyCharm is smart enough to just uh, get most of this stuff right. We'll just double check it. And most by most of the stuff, I mean uh, just making sure the interpreter is correct, that it's pointing to the virtual environment and that we have PyTest set up. Um, so we see our project. 
And I'm going to full screen this because I don't need to get out of PyCharm anymore. Um, and I've got uh, some notes on what we're going to cover today. Um, so let's go ahead and pull that up. And, uh, and I'm going to switch it to view mode. So we've already covered who I am. Uh, there's the GitHub link. A um, little bit about why we're doing this webinar. And I've mostly put this stuff there so that when people are looking at GitHub later, they'll be reminded. But um, setting up, looking at the interpreter and the PyTest setting. I think that's all I have to do to get started. So let's go ahead and start that. Um, the interpreter is uh, open up uh, the preferences. And there's so many things in here that I just go ahead and search for it. Uh, Paul and people that are experts at this probably remember where, it, where it's all at. Interpreter. Uh, huh. Project interpreter. There we go. And it is looking in my virtual environment. So perfect. That's just what I wanted. The next thing I want to test is the tests. There's uh, integrated tools. And it did it often, it, this is, a, I don't know how it picks this, but it, it saw that I was using PyTest, so it selected it. Sometimes it doesn't, and it shows unit tests. So we'll just make sure that's set. And after those two settings, we're good to go. Um, there's other, uh, since I have uh, uh, my project installed, I don't need to worry about paths too much. Um, so I've, it, this is a pretty small project. I've just got a command line interface and a database associated with it. And then I've got some tests. Um, and before we get into this project too much, I've got a couple tests set up um, that are really basic. So one of the reasons why, um, so before I get too much into it, do I need to increase the uh, font size in any? Or is this good? I think this is okay, but let's um, let's go ahead and increase it a little bit. Go to preferences and type font. Oh, I've got. Um, oh, I've good. Got, okay, good. Thank you. So one yep. of the first things I do is map Control Plus to uh, increase font. Got it. All right. So we've got. Um, yeah, this is this, one of the reasons why I like by test is because uh, a simple test is very simple. It's just uh, a test that starts with test underscore. That's it, so, or it's a function. So uh, to run this, um, run this simple test, uh, you can right click on it and hit run PyTest. And this is, um, then we'll see the output below. We see that it ran it. Uh, there's a lot going on here and we will cover uh, a lot of it today. And I'm gonna pull up um, our where we're at today in the uh, editor in a separate tab so that we can see that at the same time. I saw uh, a different webinar with, uh, with Paul that he did this and I liked it. So uh, we'll move this over, increase. Hello world test. So run different ways. So we ran it. Um, and that's good. We our hello world. This little dot means pass. It's a pytest is a very not very expressive in that way, uh, but you can make it be. So one of the things uh, we'll do, and we'll get there. Um, I want to run uh, this ran just one test. Um, when we when we look at this, there's this little is it control shift? I think this means control shift R. So let's try that. Um, and this one we're rerunning a lot is very handy to just rerun things quickly. Um, and I was selecting this one test. I can also select these other tests, of course, but I can go outside of, if I'm outside of just anywhere in the file and hit Control Shift R. Now I've run all the tests. So I can run them within here. I can also um, go over to um, my uh, Project Explorer and select uh, any file to run and run that. And just this ability 
I mean, this this alone is a a, a great step forward in using PyTest because you can do all this in PyTest. You can select different uh, different sub tests to run, but there's a lot of typing and you have to memorize a few things. It's not difficult, but this is way easier. And then when one once everything is run, you can also select it within the test results. So let's say you would really want to rerun test one, you can run it from there. And that is really slick. And you can if there's if you haven't changed anything, this uh, little run tab just reruns things. And then all these other goodies are really useful. Uh, when we have a lot of tests, you can uh, test results. You can expand them all, collapse them all. A lot of this stuff was um, covered in a previous uh, webinar, so I'm not going to go too much into it. But this is one of my favorite buttons right here: is the auto test. And uh, this, what this does is, it's what it just hangs out and looks at, make sure when you change your code, you can. Uh, It'll refine it. So if I go over here and cert uh, one equals one, and just wait a couple seconds, it'll rerun it. And how long does it wait? Well, you can configure that. So you can set the auto test delay right there. So I guess it's set to three seconds right now. And there we go. Um, really handy feature. I use it all the time, especially when I'm uh, really uh, messing with code a lot. Now, what when we uh, select any of these things and uh, test it, uh, test in different ways, what's happening really is um, is PyCharm is setting up these run configurations. And you can look at what all of the auto-derived run configurations just by selecting there and hitting edit configurations. And these are the two automatically generated ones that you've got. And you'll see that um, there's a, the PyTest path of what to select. There's a place for keywords and additional arguments. So that's where one of the things I said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select everything and run it again so I can have a run configuration that runs everything. But it only shows these three dots. If I want to see more, oops. Um, I'm going to add uh, the uh, additional arguments, and I'm going to add the dash V for verbose. Well, before you close that dot, uh, sorry, <laughs> that's too late. Can you open that? Yeah. Uh, if I could point something out, the working directory that it chose was the tests directory. And this is why you had to do the editable install so that your package importing wasn't requiring the Python magic thing to be running in the parent of the directory with the code. Um, yeah. And so okay. for those of you that wondered, why did Brian make me do that step of a setup.py and a pip install dash e dot whatever? Uh, this is part of the reason why. Yeah, and there's other ways to get around it. So this, this even if you right. edit it in here for PyCharm, it, automatically adds cool things like adding the 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 source roots to python path so it should have it would have found right. it anyway but then that would have failed on travis or something like that yeah um the uh, this is so i i depend on all these automatic things a lot if you want yeah, so too. i added additional argument here dash v but the it isn't in the other one if I want it for all future ones, I can go into the defaults and find my Python test, PyTest, and add it there. And it'll get copied everywhere else. Um, That's a good the, point. Uh, and we'll, we'll touch on keywords a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show what Dash V does. Dude, um, you just taught me something about PyCharm. Uh, really? I never yeah. thought to do that. All right. That's good. Um, so with the dash V, we get a more verbose output. We see exactly which tests were run. Um, if I if I really just like that and I want to keep that around all the time, the one of the best things to do is to just instead of doing it in uh, uh, if it's, uh, in your configuration, you can add that to your pytest any file. Um, and an any file is just you can put. Uh, uh, usually one of these, um, I'll put it at the top level of my tests. 
Um, and it's a, uh, I forget what format this is, but it's, it's pretty easy. And I'm going to add ops and all of these are, um, uh, easy to find in the PyTest documentation, um, but um, I also covered in the book, of course, plug for the book. Um, and so if I go back to my run configuration and take this out and rerun my tests, yay, it's still there. This time it picked up the dash V from the PyTest any file. Um, and that's a little bit of that. Where are we at? Um, uh, PyTest any, uh, wow, I even planned to do that. That's cool. Continuous testing. Di oh, we didn't do a diff. I want to do that because that's really cool about PyCharm. Uh, my hello world. Um, oh, it's in the wrong pane. Uh, close pane. <laughs> Uh, I want on this side, I want the nodes. On this side, I want Hello World. Yay. Um, so, one of the things that PyTest does is it, when there's something wrong, so this test will pass, um, and I'm still learning to use Control Shift R. Um, this passes, but let's muck it up. So, let's uh, make it fail by adding uh, like four there. And what PyTest will do will show you um, ex if there's a, a failing equal assertion, it does expected versus actual. And it doesn't know where your expected and actual is. It just picks the left side is the expected one and the right is actual. So if you're used to putting um, the calculated value and your expected value on the other side, just know that PyTest will reverse those when in this output. Um, the one of the nice things about PyTest, of course, is that it'll tell you exactly in a lot of uh, assertions. It'll tell you exactly what the difference is. Like right here at the bottom, tells you that the three and the four are different. PyCharm also um, will let you. And we have this cool click to see the difference thing, and it pops up uh, a diff viewer, and you can see the difference also. And I like that. It's neat. Um, now this, we haven't seen a lot of the, the this is so, actually something I just learned this year is this set notation. So this is what I've done here is there's, uh, put a test within a class and, uh, um, this is just to show, I don't usually use classes for testing, but it is kind of cool that you can put a bunch of tests in classes. And one of the reasons to do that, um, is so that you can run them together. So if you have uh, uh, now uh, a couple class tests that you always run together and they're related, you can, uh, can I run that class? Yeah, I can just run that class of tests. That's one of the, it's really one of the main reasons. Um, the other thing is you can scope uh, fixtures uh, to class scope if you feel like it so that you can have set up and tear down at a class level. Um, let's speaking of fixtures. That's one of the main reasons why I got into PyTest. Before so moving like on to, to fixtures, let me know when you can take some questions because we have a good list. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, I had a reminder here that we'll take an interlude. So for yeah. uh, for questions, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks. Um, first question from Martin. Uh, my production code has logging with relative paths which break when I run PyTest from a test directory. Is there an easy way to disable logging for a PyTest run? Probably. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely going to have to uh, look that one up. Um, it's not something that I do. So. The next one's going to be a lot easier. There, I think there's a PyCharm answer and a PyTest answer. Um, you've already covered, hinted at it in PyCharm. Is there a way to have testing performed continuously, always running, whereas you type code and checks near real time? Yeah, well, the the we covered the the continuous or this uh, auto test feature, but within um, there is uh, a couple plugins for PyTest that if you're you you use using having wanting it to run outside um 
a pie charm, of course. Um, there's a, a pie test watch um, package that I'll try to look up the URL for. But it uh, it it you basically you give it a configuration and you give it a directory, um, and it watches that directory for any changes and reruns the test. Um, and then Tox, well, it's not Tox, Xdist, I believe, um, is the Xdist uh, PyTest Xdist is a plugin that helps with uh, distributed testing. You can run and uh, parallel testing. You can run a bunch of tests in parallel. But one of the features that it has as well is a a flag to a watch flag, so it'll watch things as well. All right. Next, uh, for this sounds like a paid political announcement for you. Um, for new Python programmers, what is the best place to get started with PyTest? Yeah, uh, well, definitely my book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that's one of the reasons why we're doing a lot more visual things, like uh, like this this webinar, and um, I'm also planning on trying to put a course together. However, um, a lot of the information we've got that I I put together was through my learning on how to use PyTest itself, and all of those those learnings were captured in a blog a series of blog posts at pythontesting.net. Um, that's a that's a, again another plug for me. But the PyTest community itself is uh, pytest.org, um, and it has uh, there's the community is great, and they're they're really eager to help new people. So reach out to people. All right, um, you can do this one fast because we got a lot of questions. Uh, does PyTest do behavior BDD Gherkin? I believe so. Yeah, there's a there's a plugin uh, PyTest BDD. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I, I have not used because I don't like to use Gherkin and stuff. <laughs> All right, this next one um, you can talk about a little bit. I'd like to talk about it a little bit as well from a PyCharm perspective. Can options be taken from setup.cfg as well? Um, in my projects, I have my dot coverage RC file and I have it at the root and I spent a long time yelling at PyCharm because it wouldn't see it. And that's because I needed to set my working directory in the run configuration to start at the root. Um, Py, there is a ticket about this that PyCharm should walk up the tree like you're supposed to, and we don't. Uh, but do you want to talk about setup.cfg and PyTest? Uh, not, well, I, th I believe PyTest will pick it up. Um, it does the walking of the tree, but it does it. Um, it, it that's one of the reasons why to have a PyTest any file is it will walk up um, your test directories to find configurations until it finds um, a like a PyTest any or a uh, setup.cfg or I can't actually remember all of the different things it'll look for. But um, having having nothing sometimes if you're, one of the things I've noticed is if you're playing with just um, uh, some random tests and you're just putting them in a directory, a subdirectory somewhere, um, you'll get weird results sometimes because it'll walk up past you where, what you think is a reasonable working directory looking for uh, configuration files. So throwing an empty PyTest any file within a directory that you're playing playing with code in is a good, good idea. Uh, let's see. Um... Let's uh, get you back on track. We got a whole bunch of questions, but we'll save them up for the next interlude. Okay, great. Um, I this uh, before we test this a lot. I just this is a, a stripped down version of the tasks project that I worked on in the book. Um, but it, uh, I just wanted to show people that haven't used it. I don't know what my tasks are right now. That I oh, do webinar. Cool. I'm working on that. Um, so the uh, ta this tasks project is just this simple uh, command line. Um, it's a to do list, uh, and I, I built it so that I can uh, keep track of what people are doing at work. Um, but it, if I it doesn't do much, uh, it does. You can add a task, count them, list them. It's a simple CRUD application, really. Uh, but this uh, trim down version. So that's what we're looking at. But we're not. I normally don't test through the user interface. I like to test underneath, right under the user user interface for most of my tests. 
So I've got the command line interface separated um, in into into two files, and most of my tests will test against this uh, test DB interface or task DB. Um, so we've got this here. Um, one of the things I've set up already is a um, uh, so I've got this this task object that I'm passing back and forth between the uh, command line interface and the the data database. The uh, this I'm using adders now because I'm kind of in love with it. In the book, I used uh, named tuples, but they work if from the outside use model they're similar. But uh, adders has a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can do with it. Like one of the things I've got here is this compare equals false. What this does is it makes all of the objects that I I I want to be able to compare things and have if as long as the summary owner and done flag are the same, then two tasks tasks are equal. I don't want this identifier to be part of the equality, and that's all you have to do to get that to work. So I've got um, I want to add a test test the add one, and I've got a first attempt here. So I've got. This is actually pretty good, and um, this will run, and hopefully, yep, still passes. And it's doing a lot here. Um, we've got, I guess I didn't need that import right now, but I'll use it in a minute. The um, this test will this takes the this parameter, and this isn't really a parameter. This is naming temperature, which is a built-in. Uh, a built-in fixture for PyTest. And what it does is it gives me, uh, it's a, fi or a, this fixture gives me a temporary directory when I'm running it. And we can use it to create a temporary file within that directory. And I'm passing that. So to create an empty database, I've got this, I got to have a file. I got to give it to this task database. And right now I'm making sure that it's equal. This isn't really a great style because I, I like to have all these certs at the bottom, but I want to make sure this is uh, empty here. Um, and the actually, we let, let's take a look at this path. And one of the ways we can do that is to go ahead and run this in the debugger. Uh, but then we'll, we'll fix this a little bit more. Um, and running it in the debugger, and then we can just wait until it stops. Wait. I didn't really need to do that. Where are we? Uh, keep going. There we are. Now my path is this long temporary path. Um, I don't really care about it usually, but one of the nice things about this this is for debugging purposes is PyTest will keep this around for a little while. And I can't remember what the, it's well-defined what a little while means, but it, um, after your test is completed, if, if there's a problem halfway through, you can go, you can go and, uh, you know, dissect that and look at it and see, see what's going on. Um, and uh, as you notice, um, I guess jumping into the debugger to take a look at it, to debugging tests is a real handy feature. Uh, I use it all the time. Um, and run that but i so part of uh i do like to keep with either there's there's it's known by two names given when then is what behavior driven development uses but it's the same as a a range act assert so i have extra c there um and other models but i i like to try to push my given up into fixtures as as much as possible because if if there's a failure um like let's say creating a ta the database doesn't work um, right, and uh, so I'm going to artificially assert right there and rerun the test. Um, the the uh, PyCharm marks this as a failure, uh, but um, but PyTest will uh, also fail it, and I don't really want that to be a failure because my adding didn't fail; it's the setting up the database. So let's move this into. I'm going to move this into a fixture. Um, and to do that, I just put PyTest fixture and a different function name. I want this to be database. So now I've got, uh, 
I need still need to import the tempter, uh, take the path, assert that, and return my database. So that it, you with fixtures you can if you need to do a teardown, you do it here. But you have to change the return to a yield at that point. You can still uh, return um, your data to to your test, but now I don't need within the test. I can just say DB. I don't need in all of this, and I'm just gonna put the yeah. This will all work. Now, um, to, to see this a little in a little bit more detail, to see what happened, I think that's useful to do. I'm going to go ahead and um, run this same configuration with an extra flag. Um, I'm going to call that. It's set up. I think I, sometimes I have to look this up, but I've done this so many times. Hopefully I got that right. Um, and PyTest within uh, this, with that setup show, I'll show you exactly what's going on. We've got a tempter factory that's actually being created before tempter. This tempter uses a, uh, a module scope session session scope. That's what this S is for, and then a function scope tempter, and then uh, then the database. Uh, this fixture function is called. Um, then my my then my test, and then we do the teardowns. So we don't really have anything to do here, uh, but if we had some more code here, that would get run afterwards, and then we tear it down that way. Very handy, and being able to, as we can see, the um, I'm I'm already using fixtures that use other fixtures. This is just uh, chaining them together will make your life easier. Um, the uh, I'm like I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. Take this run configuration, this setup show out. Um, but I, I made this comment here. Um, the when I add something to a database, um, I've got a lot of side effects. The the count will be increased. The uh, I'll be able to get the get the item out of there. There's a lot of things I could check, but um, I'm going to know that I'm going to probably write tests to make list tasks is kind of complicated. Count really doesn't tell me too much about exactly what's in there. It's useful, but um, I will leave it in. I'll, I'm going to take out the list tasks because I don't think that's... I'll, I'll put those tests somewhere else. But um, making sure that I can get out the thing that I just added, I'll just leave that as my test for now. It's not a very complete test, but it does it pretty good. I like to keep things, the uh, asserts, really pretty short. If there's a whole bunch of them, maybe we can just uh, make more tests. But one of the things I showed you before is uh, the failure the, uh, that happens when I uh, when this failed within the test. Now, if I have this assert fail within the fixture, we get a different result. So let's uh, go ahead and run that. Um, and now, it's Py, PyCharm still says I had a test failure, but PyTest will tell me that that's an error, not a failure. And I, um, you can separate those out. Um, and I really, this is huge for me because I'd like to make sure that um, I chase down actual uh, failures and not um, things that, like if I have a test, if the ad failed, I would think there's something wrong with the ad feature. But if it's an error, I, I know that I didn't even get through my given condition. So that's one of my, uh, when I'm working with a lot of complicated fixtures, that's excellent um, to do. and. Uh, the other thing, now I want to be able to, I've got this useful fixture now, um, and I'm going to want to write more tests other places, like a test delete or test list in a, maybe a different file. But I can't see it from this file. So um, I want to, to share it with other tests. I want to take this out completely, and I'll grab my uh, imports also. And put it in my conf test. I don't have anything there yet. Um, I don't need these comments. And return is probably fine. And now within my 
test add, I don't need this fixture anymore because it's already in my conf test. And you can rerun that again. And super handy. I like it. Um, yeah, I kind of covered a lot of stuff. Is this a good time to take a break for questions? Great time. Okay. Um, first, on this, uh, go back to the previous fixtures. This one? Yep. Um, I, no, you had a yield. Oh, yeah. And we had two questions about um, why do you have to do yield instead of return? You don't have to, but maybe you want to talk quickly about that. And then I'll go on to the list of questions. Um, within uh, the, you, you, you have to yield if you have more stuff to do below it. Right. Um, so if I have like, if I have to do a DB dot uh, disconnect or, you know, if I often resources have some cleanup that they have to do, you'll want to do a yield the resource and then clean up afterwards. In and other test frameworks, that's like setup versus teardown. When you use yield, you can do teardown after the yield. Yeah. Um, in the, uh, if you do a return, then clearly this is just like, this right. is like, uh, it won't, it won't get there. So if you've got something afterwards and when I, run this uh like for instance uh if i have a connection to mongo if i'm using mongo as my database instead of tiny um i do need to disconnect from it so in that case i will stick a, a yield in there instead um and for those of you that want to see that in action you put a yield with something after it and then run your test with the debugger and like put a breakpoint before and then you'll see that um execution will go off into the tests and then it will come back to that print statement on line 11 that Brian's putting up. Okay. Um, zooming way out. Uh, can you go to a test, the simplest possible test that you have? Hello world or something. Sure. So um, Jacob is asking the questions. Why is this better than unit test? Um, uh, you know, Right now, so for unit test, the, the the main difference for like this this test class, I would have to say unit test mm -hmm. uh, test case. And uh, other than that, oh, um, the asserts. Okay, so the yeah. with, with unit test, the assert you can this will still fail on unit if there's a failure there. Unit test will fail this as well. Um, so what, a lot of people say there's a lot of boilerplate with unit test. I don't really see this as a ton of boilerplate. It's not terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to get better uh, test results, um, like uh, the the good to diff, uh, the, uh, the assertion failures are important to you to see what's exactly wrong. Then within unit test, you you there's a whole bunch of helper functions like uh, I don't even remember self assert equal. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch. Uh, e there's a whole bunch of them, and I don't remember them all. Um, right. Um, that's the main, there's, there's, that's a decent reason. The other reason for simple tests is just that, um, I, I don't have, I almost always get to the point where I'm using fixtures and, uh, even for things like temporary directories. So, um, I can't use those with the unit test. Yeah. Jacob, I'd answer that similarly that your first five minutes of life with unit tests versus pi tests might be the same, just like in web frameworks. It's the remaining 5,000 hours of your testing experience where pi test really shines. Yeah. Um, there's, there's definitely, I mean, it's a, it's pi test is a work in progress. There's, it's still going on. I mean, it's definitely usable. There's tons of people using it, mm. but there are occasionally um, you'll get assertions where, there's just bizarre, bizarre output that you have to dig through. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're used to looking at, uh, trace packs, um, it's not terrible. Look at the first, the first inch and the last inch, uh, should give you a clue as to what's going on. All right. On to the next one. We'll try and rapid fire this a little bit. Uh, okay. Is it a good idea, Hans asks, is it a good idea to keep your test methods with the original class you are implementing and testing? I believe he means the test module in the same directory as the module that you're testing. Um, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer and see if I get it right. 
Well, my answer is no, because there's a couple of reasons. Um, uh, the, I'm, when I'm running the tests, I, uh, like right now, it, I can, for instance, if I'm running talks, I'm not running this code right next to it. I'm running the, the, the code that's running in an install. So the talks will, or other continuous integration will install your, uh, code and run it there not from your source code um the other bit is i'd like to be able to refactor things a lot and if i want to completely rip out a whole bunch of stuff here in the source code and rewrite it um i, I definitely want my tests separate uh, that's my answer um also if you're distributing a package a lot of times people don't want the tests distributed with the code and so they put it in a different directory so that the um the wheel doesn't contain the code oh, right. um i do not know the answer to this if you don't we'll let the pycharm team take it what is the best approach to doing uh pie test testing within a jupyter notebook Ooh, i don't have an answer to that all right Ernst, that one's for you, buddy. All right. Um, this one's an easy easy one, but you can just talk a little bit about how it works. Uh, does PyTest integrate into continuous deployment workflows with Jenkins? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do it all the time. There's a, um, there's a flag that uh, I always forget, so I look it up. Um, <laughs> but I can just help do help and grip for... Uh, J unit, something like J unit. Yeah, J unit XML. If you, it's built into it, um, and if you add that to a path, it'll export uh, an XML file with all the test results, and that's what you need for Jenkins to. Uh, you just you know set up your command line to run PyTest on something, and then set um, you need to output that XML, and then Jenkins can read that. All right. Next up. Um... This is one where you can explain kind of the layers of the testing stack. For what is PyTest better than simple asserts? Can we do the same, or is PyTest a framework with many features? I don't actually understand the question. Of I think the idea answer. is, sure, you can put asserts in your code and just run it under Python, but you want test suites, you want fixtures, you want a test runner, and I know in JavaScript, these are all different kinds of packages that are meant to be worked together. But the test runner is different than the assertion library, which is different than the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Like, for instance, a lot of people um, uh, have an existing uh, set of unit tests, for instance, written in written or set of tests written in unit test. Um, those that's a, a different assertion library than PyTest. Right. You can use PyTest to run those. You can have PyTest just be the runner. That is a possibility. Um, the, uh, yeah, um, the benefits uh, of keeping, I, the reason why I've gone with PyTest is because I can do from everything from unit tests up to huge integrated system tests with um, even external equipment and control that just from the same framework. As a quick note from Andre Vlasovsky, the um, PyCharm Community Edition team lead pointed out that Python 3.7 will have the data class support. It's usable in PyCharm EAP now for stuff similar to adders, which you talked about at the beginning. Um, and uh, Martin, who had asked about the diff, and you had showed how you can click in PyCharm and see uh, a big diff. Uh, but in PyTest itself, if you have a diff that's too big for the console display, is there like dash dash V or some other flag you can give to tell PyTest to be copious? Yeah. So there's a, like, um, uh, actually, I've got, I, don't, I guess I don't have this example here. So let's, let's make this fail. Um, you'll see a... Um, Oh no, ring her off. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I've got, it usually says so. So it says there's a diff. Now oh, this one's, it had, you could see everything, but, 
but sometimes it'll say use uh, use verbose to see more. Oh, I already have verbose set up. That's why. So if you don't have verbose uh, set, um, it, you'll get a little flag that says, "Hey, add verbose to see more information." So this um, so there's a lot of X. This is more information than you would see without verbose. So, Got it. In that file that you have open right there, can you import PyTest and make a dumb, you know, a hello fixture and put it in as an argument for test one? Sure. Do we want it to do anything? Yeah, uh, no, that's fine. We just want to show that Py, put your mouse over the argument Pi and Pi Charms whining about shadows, the name. Yeah. Uh, we know Pi Charms got to do better about that. The way to make the pain go away is to move that to a comp test. Or you can say on line seven, fixture name equals high, and then change the function name to kind of high. <laughs> Do have to do it. Uh, I always forget. It's closer. Right. Huh. Yeah, okay. so that made that one go away. Yeah, um, um, one of the things that it's showing here, which is fine, it says parameter high is not used. This, um, often you won't, um, if you have, uh, like, things that you want to run before your test that yeah. are, you're not using the data from it, you will have uh, fixtures set in set up that aren't being used in the test. That's very common. That happens to me all the time. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's let you go ahead and continue and come back to these. Okay. Um, thanks for one of the questions. Sure. Um, I've, I've already filled in, uh, we're going to pr do parameterized testing a bit. Um, I've got, uh, the other, one of the other things I already filled in, let's drop this down for now. Uh, um, a whole bunch of tests about my, uh, task data item, uh, data object. And these really helped me when I, when I switched from, uh, switched to using adders. Is to be able to to run tests against uh, against the system to make sure that these worked just identically with with named tuples versus uh, um, versus adders, and uh, these I've got I'm I'm like making sure that uh, equal these two items for instance these tasks are equal even though they have a different identifier an ID um, the uh, the unequal. Let's go ahead. This is the only the only thing I did is change uh, one element here. But that's you know I, I might might think that that's not really that complete of a test. So um, instead of writing a whole bunch of tests with a lot of different uh, like maybe change the summary, change the owner in one. I'll just go ahead and do that within one test. I can just I've got to import pytest first, and then I can. Uh, parameterize it and I have to remember to use the British spelling parameterize there's no e here um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pass in the T the second task I'm just gonna call it another um, and I've it passes in a list I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this up. Actually, I'm going to have a whole bunch of these tasks. And this is, so this is identical to the first one. I'm going to pass in another to there and T1 is not equal to another. And then uh, just to do a bunch of these. Um, so then in the, in the second one, I'll change change the true to false, and this one I'll just change my name, and this one I'll do something, to maybe just sit. Um, and the IDs don't matter because they they are not part of the equality. 
Uh, and let's run that. Oh, I failed. Oh, the first one, the first element failed. Oh, because the first element, uh, I go to my task, test. Uh, the first one was the exact copy. I copied that directly. So, of course, that's equal. Um, I'll take that out, rerun. And now I passed. And uh, the parameterization is slick. I can do a whole bunch of testing against one, t one test and just change the parameters. The, one of the things I want to point out is the incredible use of IDs because this is not very useful, this uh, 0, 1, 2. I can't, um, I mean, you can go back, back and look it up, but uh, there's a better way. And the use of IDs um, is just something you can add. Uh, and what it does, you can either, you can specify them, there's a few ways to specify them that I list in the book, but right, right now what I like to use is that you need to have something that takes one of the parameters and returns a string. So uh, like a lambda will work. And if I take a task and I want to return a task.id, um, that will not work because that returns an int. Um, so let's see what that happens. We get some horrible expression that is int object has no attribute in code. We, you know, uh, there probably could be a better, um, better error message for that. But what's going on is I, I intentionally did that so that if you run into it, you'll see, oh, my, my ID needs to be an int uh, string. So I'll just convert that to string and rerun. And I might have, yep. Now, um, yeah, IDs. One, 10, 11, 12. That seems weird. <laughs> Clearly, that's a bug somewhere in my code because it, it's, oh, I, oh, the ID can't be those three. I don't know. That seems weird. I'm going to have to debug that. So let's uh, not use ID. It's not very useful. Another great one that I, I learned about uh, that's obvious is just pass in repr is a great uh, a great thing to pass in for IDs. And now we've got our our tasks. Those are great IDs. Uh, um, and I like it. Uh, this is good. Uh, we can we can stack we can do more though uh, and I'm just gonna add an extra silly test um, uh, test foo. And what if I want to parameterize two things, X and Y, and uh, pass. We don't need to do anything, but um, I test mark, parameterize X. If I want to pass them both in, I can do it right here, in which case um, the syntax is uh, you've got a list of things. So you've got one, two. Three, four, and we'll see what this does. Uh, now one one and two got passed in the first time, and then three and four got passed in. Now the um, this is so that you can pass in. It just you've got a set of things. These these always go together. If we do it this way, and you can have more than you. You can have three or four or five variables, whatever. Uh, they'll get passed in and they get named here. You can use them within the test. Um, the if we want to do, we can also do a similar thing and uh, set it up almost as a matrix, um, and so that we can test all combinations. And you can that's done with stacking. And so we'll just um, pass in three for X and for Y, we'll do like four, five, six. So, and uh, probably to have a different name.
and now I've got a whole bunch of tests because uh, one got passed in. We did passed in one for X, and then all combinations of Y, uh, four, five, and six, and then went to two for X, and then four, five, six. So we can build up quite a lot of tests really fast this way. By the way, um, the PyCharm crowd's pretty smart. They spotted what happened with the 10, 11, 12 on the previous test. Oh, it's yeah. Because you have one at the end and it's not unique. So PyTest appended a character to it to make it unique. Oh, cool. So let's change that. To... Pavel, good job on that. Well, that's pretty cool. That's a cool feature as well. But I'm um, uh, Lambda. T, what did we have? Uh, string, T, ID. Do I have enough parentheses? Yep. Um, yes. Okay. Yep. The, the ID has to be unique, of course. All right. When um, you get to your we've got a bunch more questions. I know you've got a lot left to show. Oh, you know, actually, answering questions is way more important. I, I think that if there's a bunch of questions, let's an answer them. All right, cool. Can you go to um, an assertion somewhere? Sure. Uh, like our Hello World assertion? That actually line 18. So um, this was pointed out. I can't remember who mentioned it. Maybe Martin. That PyCharm has a neat feature. I personally get expected an actual backwards all the time. So yes. click on the equal equal and then do alt enter. Alt enter. Uh, Which is quick fix. And flip. Flip the equal? Yep. It'll uh -huh. Put the left on the right and the right on the left. Wow. Uh. So that's one of those little janitorial things that PyCharm does uh, really nicely. Um, someone pointed out, and I think this might be worth mentioning, is um, in the assertion, You, if the assertion is cryptic and you want to make it easier to read, and this is in your book, I believe, you could put a comma and then a message, right? Yeah. Uh... Like an F string or something. Um, oh yeah, sure. That'd be a, that'd be a better string to put in there. Expected versus actual. Yeah. F. Uh, hi, Paul. No. Yeah, but we probably want, want we'd probably want to do actual. Right. We don't have to go into it too much, but it's a little bit like. <laughs> Um, exception handling in Python, if you've got some obscure thing happening 50 miles below you, catch the exception and turn it into something a little bit more domain specific. Um, are you going to go over mocking? No. <laughs> okay. So Kelly asked about mocking, if it's the, covered in this webinar. We could have five webinars on mocking. Um, can we talk briefly about Pi test mock and mocker if that's the way you do it or if you just use python's mocking well uh pi test has a uh um monkey patch that when i okay monkey patch yeah when i'm using uh with pi test i often use monkey patch is a great way to uh just uh swap out part of your environment so right. for instance if um uh one of the things that i've got and i would use it like on the command line interface uh the simplified version in in the book, I have a, a version that has configuration, uh, reads it out of, con out of a configuration file. But within this uh, simplified version, I've got down at the bottom or somewhere in here, I'm just using, um, yeah, here it is. I'm pulling out of uh, the home directory. I'm just sticking uh, this this database in somebody's home directory. Um, if, if I, with a monkey patch, I could, change what the home directory pointed to right. within my test and point it to a temporary directory. I use that all the time. It's covered pretty well in the book. So the answer is get the dang book. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I also, the question, okay. um, the DB fixture, 
how does it receive the tempter variable? Oh, uh, tempter is a is one of the built-ins of PyTest. So if I um, there's uh, if I'm wherever I'm at, I can do PyTest dash s fixtures and see what all the fixtures are that are available. And uh, it's one of the built-in ones. Um, it's documented well online. And all of these, all the ones that are available here are going to be available for your test. And you just you just put it in there, and PyTest knows where to look it up. Uh, as an example, click on Tempter and do Command B. Command B. And uh, Python, PyCharm does not know uh, where to go, which is a shame because that's one of the things PyCharm is really, really good at. This whole fixture thing is a magical pie test universe. <laughs> um, and in the future, uh, PyCharm, if we support pie test better, we'll do a better job of navigating around and looking up fixtures. Yeah. Um, and the, what the, but one of the things I did show you was uh, this pie test fixtures. Um, right. uh, it, it also showed um, I didn't have, uh, I've got fixtures. So I didn't have a doc string available in in my own fix the DB, but we've created two fixtures DB and high so far, and this fixture shows you exactly where they are. So if you if you're not sure where they are, you can use the dash fixtures um, and find out where they are. All right. Next up, um, how do you control the order of fixtures execution? Are class scoped fixtures always run before function scoped? Fixtures are run before they're needed. Um, so the if I've got and that's that's a I know that's a little bit obscure, but the um, but it's an I've, excuse to talk about scoping. Did you talk about scoping yet? I haven't. Um, so we've got um, within within a fixture we we change the name here, but we can also add scope, and it, the scope can be. Um, uh, we've got class uh, session. Uh, there's, there's. Let's just write them out. Session module and uh, class and and function. Oops, completion not working. Yeah, nine comments. So. The uh, the session scopes uh, the scope is the like the lifetime of the fixture. So you've got uh, if two tests use a session, if any of a session is your entire test session, so you're um, not like well the, the all the time I'm sitting at my desk. But when I run PyTest, um, it's it's all of the tests that it runs will use. Um, one version, one instance of a session scope fixture, and then uh, and then a module scope uh, will be once per module, if it's needed. A class will be once per once per uh, class. So if I had a class scope fixture being used in here by either the test or by uh, reference within the by the class, it'll uh, get run around this, and that will be run before. Uh, function scopes within that test. However, as an example, if uh, test three used a class scope fixture and test four used just a function scope fixture, you're still going to, it's if you only run test four, that class scope fixture isn't going to get run. So um, they, if you have dependencies between fixtures, they should depend on each other. So if I've got and that's um, it's it's okay to be completely artificial about that. So let's uh, let's just put a couple in. So I've got a, a PyTest uh, fixture with uh, scope equals session. Uh, big something. And I've got a, a function scope that I that I always want. Uh, function is the default, so if you don't write anything, it's function scope. And I've got a, a something else that that always needs big to run before it. 
even if you're not using the data from it, just specify it. And and then anybody that uses uh, the little test will, um, let's go ahead and just do that. So let's have test one use little. And we'll run that. And then we can run it with, um, with our uh, setup show. And we see that big gets run before little. If there's, if there's an order dependency that you need, specify it. That's what I think. That, I just learned something. That's really handy. Um, related to that, uh, you just showed little, which doesn't do any computation or return anything useful. Uh, sorry. Its purpose isn't to return anything useful. It's to do some computation. Um, someone was pointing out that we can't, there's a decorator that allows you to use a fixture without using its data. Do you um, have a PyTest decorator for that? Yeah. You can, um, right. So there's a, uh, it's use fixtures. Uh, okay. yeah, it's called, uh, um, I think it's a marker. So it's something like, uh, uh, let's try it if, on, on the fly. PyTest. Mark, uh, use, I can't remember if there's an underscore or not. And it would be something like that. But I would, I would look, I would definitely look it up because that's yeah. probably not right. Okay. Let's speed through some things. Um, what's a way to package up a set of fixtures to reuse in other projects? Um, the, the, <laughs> um, Best way, I think, is to to you can package them up. There's a lot of ways that people do it. My favorite way is to go ahead and just make a package um, and write a plugin. So if you write a pytest uh, a pytest plugin to uh, to with all of your fixtures in it, you can just um, have that be installable anywhere you need them, and they're available. Um, the uh, it's kind of more more. To, to how to do that is definitely more uh, takes more time than we've got here. But I, since it's uh, something I encourage people to do, it's covered in the book, of course. Um, I don't know of a better way. Uh, uh, yeah. The other way would be to just have, um, you know, you could share things in conf test and copy them around, but that's not really that great. Or get sub module or something like that. Yeah. But anything that, even if you just, um, uh, right. So there, there need to be, yeah, uh, I don't have a better answer than that. Uh, for those of you that use Sphinx, for those of you that write Sphinx extensions, and for the three of us that write tests for those Sphinx extensions, <laughs> uh, Sphinx ships with the thing that Brian's describing, um, a set of fixtures that you can use to test your Sphinx extensions. So that is an example. It's a PyTest specific thing too. Okay. And, uh, um, can we do something in PyTest before running tests like at before in JUnit or, you know, unit tests, unit test two, stuff like that. Fixtures are the way to do it, but is there some other machinery yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of hooks that you can then utilize. So you just want some code to run uh, before the rest of your tests. Is that what we're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Uh, um, the, uh, there, there are some hooks, but the definitely the easiest way um, is, is a fixture. So yeah. uh, if you, this is a one, I'm going to just go ahead and show this because I, I use it all the time and I didn't think to do this. If I've got, uh, like a fixture that I want to run all the time. I can name it whatever I want. Um, and and then I uh, add audio, auto use. Ah, that's what they're looking for. Um, and if auto use is set to true, um, you will always, um, uh, it will always be run. Right. So I reran that. I didn't... I, before isn't being mentioned by test one, but it is uh, getting run 
by everybody. It's a function level, so I probably don't want it to be run before every tests. Um, so uh, the if it's just one time thing, then make sure that you're setting the scope to be a session scope. Yep. And, and you're hinting yeah. at something that I wanted to point out about scoping uh, in my Sphinx project. Uh, I want to be really careful when I rerun the universe in Sphinx because it takes a while. And so I use scoping pretty carefully to speed up performance. I can calculate something once and reuse it across a bunch of tests. Right. Um, for instance, when I'm using uh, in my tests here. Uh, for the Databases this are kind of the same thing. Yeah, but uh, so the the tiny DB is really fast to connect right. to, but I don't really need to create this temporary directory and connect to the database all the time for most of my tests. I could have set up this as a um, session scope, um, yep, a session scope fixture. In which case, I have to use, um, I will have to use a the tempter factory instead of tempter because tempter is a function scope. I have to use the factory. So we would change the tempter use, um, and then uh, and then I would have uh, another. I would probably like take, name this session or something, and um, and then the DB would rely on it. Uh, DB session, and then instead of uh, connect creating it, I would go ahead and just do DB session delete all. Some some way to clean it all out, and then yield it or return. That would be one way to um to 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 make that faster within the yeah. tests. Hey, and next then, question is one that um, for people reading Brian's book, uh, you'll probably predict that he's going to giggle with joy at this question. Um, I uh, can fixtures be parameterized, for example. A database connection fixture that's parameterized to connect to three different databases. Basically, the combination of parameterize and fixture. Uh, yeah, there's and that's in, in flux, but definitely yes. Uh, so parameterize and fixture. Um, yeah, you you just um, you can add params to it. So um, that's the answer. Param, and then you give it a list of things. Uh, and so later in your test, when you use parameterize like Brian showed before to shove a whole bunch of data into a test, that whole bunch of data is also going to be shoved into the fixtures, which can pick the pieces that they want and return different fixture data based on the parameters. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. But the it's, it's done a little different. So to get that data out, so if I had it set up like this, um, I probably wouldn't use an auto use at this point, but uh, no. for for this, but the you uh, to get this data out, you have to um, request, right? Yeah. yeah, there's a request object, and you return like request dot param uh, param. I don't know. I think it's that. Um, I'd have to look it up though. And you know, uh, let's see. Let's, Yeah, we don't have to actually show it, but that's basically yeah. in the ballpark and um, get Brian's book because he covers it pretty well. <laughs> but also that that's the thing that the if you want to, it's called fixture parameterization and look up request param. If you Google yeah. that, you'll find stuff. It's the kind of thing that doesn't fit in my brain, but I know where to find it. Exactly. It's one of the reasons why I wrote the book is because there's a whole bunch of this stuff that I can't fit in my brain. So, All right. Um Let's see. Uh, Cody says, <laughs> uh, five webinars on mocking would be great, by the way. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Mock mocking is one that takes so much zen. Oh, my gosh. I still suck at it. All right. A question. Why is import pie test underlined red up at the top? Good question. That happens to me sometimes as well. Um, it's uh, just a case of PyCharm getting confused. PyTest does a lot of magic on a number of things. 
So Brian, for example, delete that line, the import PyTest, and then click on PyTest at PyTest and do Alt Enter. Alt Enter. And do the import and let PyCharm do the import for you. And did it do an import at the top? Scroll up. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So that's an error on our side. Um, see the order of tests. It did it eventually. Uh, is there a way to use the data from an auto use equals true fixture inside the test? Yeah, but you have to name it. Okay. Um, I mean that, and that's it's not even that uncommon that that some test you something you want auto done that a lot of tests don't care about the data, but some of the tests do. You just name name it, and it'll uh, you'll be able to get it. Here's what I can't believe you and I for didn't ever talk about showing this, uh, and it's very much worth showing because it's a good mode of testing. And I personally look in the wrong place every time. Testing that something raises an exception. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With something we should show. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So let's let's make an exception. Um, so let's say I give, I've got this added new ID. I know it's in there. So let's, um, uh, instead of writing a new test, I'm just going to extend this one for now. Uh, if I try to delete it, um, PB. Uh, what did I have for delete? Uh, delete, delete ID. Cool. This should work. This should be fine, but I shouldn't be able to do it twice. And it'll probably throw an exception. And if I really, and it did, cool, I got a key error. So if I, I know that, that if I want to write a test to make sure I can't delete things twice, I can uh, do um, PyTest uh, with PyTest raises key error. And I have to import PyTest again. And that will pass. But if it if it raises some other kind of error, like a name error, um, it'll fail. And was it use was it a useful failure? Here, uh, well, I guess uh, I'm not sure if that's really a useful uh, message or not, but um, definitely made it fail. Okay. Okay. Is there a way to control the order of tests? Um, the test, yeah, the test. Uh, for instance, so we, if we run all of them, they all get run in some order. Um, and what is the order? There, there are ways. There's different. Like for instance, there's plugins to do uh, randomization. You can randomize them. You can, um, um, but uh, the order them. There are different plugins that you can get and to change the order. And there's a uh, that's one of the best things to do is to get a plugin that changes the order and look at how it does it. Um, but uh, essentially, I don't have the exact details for that. By the way, in the background, the um, PyCharm developers are talking about the red squiggly you got for uh, import PyTest. Um, do you have more you want to show before taking any more questions? We are we got to wrap this up pretty soon. We're way over, but. It's oh yeah. Sorry about started. that. Yeah. Um, there's, I, 
I'm glad we got questions. I'm going to explore things. One of the things I wanted to, to keywords are great. And one of, that's one of the things I wanted to say. Like, for instance, uh, I have all these tests. If I really wanted to just run test foo, for instance, um, I could go find it and run it. But if I didn't remember where it was, for instance, I can just run from the top level. Um, I can add a keyword. Um, and uh, it's pro probably needs to be a string. I'm not sure. Um, and yeah and keywords are awesome and that you can add them with you can do things like and and or and not and those are fun um but uh yeah we're just getting started we'll try to get more information to people as questions come in um before we wrap up uh just to show off a little bit of pie charm sexiness uh you talked about debugging i don't think you actually did it right uh yeah i'm not sure uh, but it's super easy. Perfect. Did it... You're not running that test. Oh, yeah, I'm not running that test. Okay. Uh, that'll do it. Huh. Yep, there you go. And uh, that's something I learned um, the, from your webinar uh, is, uh, I think, visual debugging. That was a good one. Okay. Um, this this is a cool feature, step into my code. Okay. And uh, I didn't know that was there. And that's awesome. It, it says basically the step into code, but I don't want to step in libraries or anything like that. I just want to step in my code. Right. And I use this all the time now. So, like, um, I just stepped in here. I don't want to step into the raises function. So. Anyway, uh, in my uh, PyTest flow, I'm an embarrassingly wide monitor, and I take the run window and put it on the right, and I have debug that appears on the bottom just so I know when I've got the two backwards. And I find that I spend most of my time running my tests under the debugger because under Python 3.6, PyCharm's debugger is so fast, and I can just click a breakpoint, and I never flail around wondering what the heck is going on in my tests. In the the built-in uh, Python console, built-in terminal, and the to-dos are great. Um, but all these things built into PyCharm, I know they're just, I mean, they're just extra little things, but it makes it so that half the time I never leave my PyCharm yep. window anymore. And another thing, can you install coverage while I tee this next one up? Sure. Uh, we've talked about testing is something that Python developers know they need to do. They don't do it frequently enough. It's a little intimidating. So PyCharm puts a pretty face on testing. And once you start doing testing, you start thinking about coverage. How much of my code has tests? Well, coverage is a tool that is like testing. You know you need to do it, but you don't. And if there's a pretty face where all you have to do is click a little button and it works for you, then that makes it easier. So in this case, we can run the test coverage by clicking, uh, yep. What did I get? Let's see. Hmm. Let's try clicking up in the toolbar on the icon for coverage and see if that's any different. Oh, because it was still installing. All right. Pip wasn't finished. Okay. Now it only ran foo, but I wanted to run everything. Okay. So yeah, when this runs, it will give you a little panel on the right where you can dive down and see the test coverage. It will, on the very left in your project tool, it will annotate your directory structure with information. But most importantly, in the middle where Brian has his cursor, uh, your lines have color codes in the gutter that tell yeah. you information about what lines have, were covered by tests and what lines you haven't written tests for. 
There's also a feature that you can turn on what's called branch coverage, which slows things down a little bit. And it will tell you which if statements or conditionals were not followed. And it will also decorate the gutters on that. Nice. So coverage is a good part of testing, good part of pie test. And PyCharm does a good job of putting that within reach. Yeah. And coverage by itself is a super cool tool, but this uh, this gutter thing is really nice. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Okay, I believe we are uh, way over time. Caught up um, uh, under reordering tests. Uh, David says there is a hook you can implement PyTest under collection under modify items. You ever heard of that? Yes. Yep. This gets a list with the test items which can be reordered. Um, but that's it for uh, let's see. Uh, on the exception handling, do I need to have a new with block to test multiple calls with an exception raised by each? So if there's like nested exceptions. Uh, where do I put it? Um, the, the, the with block will test anything within this block. We'll check for this raises error. I believe you can have a list of possible. Uh, okay. Uh, Actually, I'm, I'm probably lying there. I'm not sure if you can have a list. Um, but if there's, uh, if you've got multiple calls that you're different parts, you really should have them separate, though, if you really expect different parts to be raising exceptions. Or if inside of there you want to do um, some inspection of the exception, you can put as exc or something at the end of that context manager. And then that will give you access to the exception that was raised. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It doesn't have to be a special name. It can be whatever name you want. Yeah. Eat. That, that's it for my questions. All right. Well, this was fun. All right. You got anything you need to do for wrapping up? No. All right, we will switch back to uh, back to my screen. Okay, uh, thanks, Brian, for taking the time to talk to us about PyTest. Really, we're lucky to get you on this webinar. Uh, you've done so much on the book, on Test the Code podcast, and this, you know, when I bug you to do five more, I'm mocking, you'll be sick of it, but we'll take as much as we can get. Well, we, um, I am thrilled with the... the uh... The JetBrains team and the PyCharm team, because um, you've been incredibly responsive when I bring up uh, when I'm, I've been testing with PyTest with this. If I find anything out, you guys are usually already working on it. So the proactiveness of the team has been great. Well, thanks. All right. If any of you have any questions later, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us by email or social media. Um, my colleague Ernst and I do a pretty good job of replying relatively quickly on the Twitter account. Um, if you'd like to get more information on PyCharm, please go to our website at jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. We'd love to get your feedback on this webinar, so please feel free to contact us on Twitter, or there's a survey that you're going to get as soon as this thing shuts off. Please fill it in. We actually look at this thing. And we will give feedback to Brian about uh, points that he raised. But it helps us determine what kinds of the topics we should cover and what kinds of things I screwed up as a host. So please let us know. Uh, we'll also provide uh, some information and additional links from the presentation on the blog post when we announce the webinar, uh, which we will do in a couple of days. All right, so wrapping up, Brian, got any final words? Um, just try to make testing great. Um, and it, it should be fun if you're, if it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. And come see us if you're at PyCon, you better be in our damn presentation, right? Yeah, definitely. All right. That's all from us today. Thank you very much for joining us and hope you have a nice day.